Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to once again talk about the mysterious comet known as Comet Borisov that was originally detected back in late 2019 or approximately a year and a half ago and surprised the scientists because it was the first comet to have ever come from the outside of the solar system while also being the second ever interstellar object detected, first one obviously being the mysterious Oumuamua. And in this video I wanted to focus on some of the more recent observations and discoveries coming out of this comet, specifically identifying some really interesting and actually quite peculiar parameters that this comet had compared to some of the other comets in the solar system. But just a reminder, one of the most amazing things about this comet is that it was discovered by this wonderful person, Gennady Borisov, an amateur astronomer residing in Crimea, who, well I guess for political reasons, uh, even Wikipedia refers to as Crimean even though Crimea is technically not a country and uh, because of the political reasons nobody wants to refer to him as either Russian or Ukrainian. So anyway, I'm not going to go into politics mostly because I personally don't really care about it and I don't think he does either, but what really impresses me about Gennady is his absolutely incredible work in terms of creating his own telescope and also in terms of being able to detect so many comets over the period of the last few years. He actually found all of these objects right here by himself and all of this was done in his free time as an amateur astronomer. So in some sense, he's actually a really, really productive astronomer, and even though he doesn't really get paid for it, he's been very successful at finding a lot of different objects. But back to the comet. So in December of 2019, this comet made the closest approach to the sun, and this also created the most amount of emissions, which the scientists were able to very accurately study using various telescopes. And later on, a few months after, in March of 2020, it essentially fell apart, creating several fragments. But what's really unusual about this object compared to Oumuamua that was detected two years prior is actually the amount of emissions it had. It emitted a lot of material, a lot more than anyone expected. And the emissions coming from this comet were extremely uncommon. Not impossible, not unseen, but very uncommon compared to the most comets we usually get uh, close to the sun. For example, today we know that it was almost completely depleted in water and had almost no diatomic carbon, but it was enriched in carbon monoxide and had a lot of amines present on the surface. All of this was detected by Hubble telescope and a lot of other telescopes, analyzing the emissions coming from the comet a few months afterwards. And the ratio of carbon monoxide to water in this comet was actually somewhat similar to this other comet we detected back in 2016, but very different from most other comets. Most comets usually have quite a lot of water, they'll usually contain about 25 times more water than carbon monoxide, but in case of Borisov comet, there was about 20 times or even 30 times more carbon monoxide here and a lot less water, at least in terms of the actual ratio. It's actually a lot more likely that there was a lot of water, but there was just a lot more carbon monoxide and a lot of other carbon compounds being emitted by the comet for one important reason, and this is actually where the most interesting part of this discovery comes. It's a lot more likely that this comet has never actually come close to any star in its past. In other words, the scientists now suggest that this is the most pristine comet we've ever seen, ever. This is basically the comet that has never experienced being a comet, and it started emitting all of this for the first time in history. Or in other words, the tail that was emitted by this comet represents some of the most pristine material we've ever seen anywhere. It has never been touched by anything until the comet came close to the sun. And the scientists behind the most recent study about the comet use the brilliant technique known as polarimetry that essentially allows the scientists to look at various emissions with polarized light. Now here's an example of this technique applied to something on planet Earth. What you're looking at right here is actually just regular ground, but it's ground in polarized light. This is actually an image of the Death Valley in California, with the mountains and sand presenting us with a very different picture if we look at it in polarized light. And by using this polarized light we can usually determine the specific contents of a typical comet retail, or really anything else in space for that matter. More specifically, this technique allows the scientists to use the polarimetric analysis to then compare this to some of the other comets in order to see if the composition is similar or different. And well, interestingly enough, they found an almost exact match. The comet, very famous comet, known as Haley Bob. Also unofficially known as the comet of the century, mostly because back in 1995 this was the brightest comet of the century. This was an absolutely brilliant and extremely easily visible comet that back then created quite a buzz. 
And one interesting thing about this particular comet is that it was also very pristine in the sense that it didn't really get to experience the inner solar system until relatively recently. The orbital calculations for this comet suggest that it actually passed by the Sun prior to this only once. And so it has never really been affected by the solar radiation and has never really changed its composition much. For the most part of its existence, it stayed in the farther reaches of space. And so interestingly, the previous visitation of this comet was about 4200 years ago, back in 2215 BC. And there's even a mentioning of this as a writing in one of the pyramids in Egypt that was produced around the same time. And this particular comet is referred to as the Nr star. I don't think I pronounced this correctly, but apparently just means long hair. And because of this mentioning of long hair, the modern historians assume that it was referring to a comet. But the only reason this comet was even visible back then was actually because a few years before that, the comet accidentally passed really close to Jupiter and dramatically changed its orbit, allowing it to come much closer to the Sun. And this was essentially the first time the comet ever came that close. And so prior to this, it was never really close to the Sun and thus was a pristine comet. Meaning that it has never really experienced any emissions and a lot of the material on the surface, for the most part, has never really been touched by anything. And so when the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below compare the polarimetric observations from Haley-Bob to Comet Borisov, they found that the comets were extremely similar, but Borisov was even more pristine and had even more unusual untouched materials on the surface implying that the polarized light produced by the comet as it was moving close to the sun was a lot more similar to Haley-Bopp than it was to other comets. And this of course means that the materials emitted from this comet were very similar to this other comet we saw back in 1995. While at the same time, what this suggests is that the comet itself most likely came from some sort of an early star system that was still developing, where things have not really started to evaporate materials just yet. So in some sense, it sort of confirms the original proposition of where the comet came from, from some sort of an early star system that started to kick out a lot of the materials as planets and a lot of other objects started to form. But the star itself most likely has not developed just yet, to the point where the light from the star starts to evaporate all of these comets and all of this material. So basically, the comet Borisov got kicked out way, way before most planets have even formed with the gas emitted here being very similar to the type of gas we would find in the early solar system about 4.5 billion years ago. So in some sense, this is kind of like looking back in time. And for this reason, it's actually something that the scientists would love to study in more detail. And since Haley-Bopp comet is not really coming into the inner solar system for the next 4,000 years, we don't really know of any other comets that have such pristine materials on the surface. But at the same time, some of the other discoveries from this paper also suggest, based on the observations from the emissions, that the comet itself is made from the materials from different parts of the star system. So it wasn't just created in a single part of the star system and most likely collected the materials from various parts. And the only reasonable explanation that scientists could come up with in order to explain this is that the star system where the comet came from most likely also has these giant planets like Jupiter or possibly some other gas giant orbiting in the star system that allow the star system to mix a lot of the materials, basically acting like a stirrer that mixes everything in the star system before the objects coalesce into comets and planetoids. And so in that sense, it is once again somewhat similar to the solar system as well. But I guess until we discover another such comet, unfortunately that's really all we know about these types of comets for now. And that is all the scientists are going to know because reaching this object now is going to be almost impossible. It's just moving way too fast. But in order to actually catch one of these comets, European Space Agency is planning to launch something known as the Comet Interceptor in 2029. With the planet itself being a kind of a satellite that's going to stay in orbit around planet Earth or possibly slightly farther away and essentially waiting for the next interstellar comet to arrive and then powering up its engines and trying to intercept the comet in order for us to catch up with it. One of the reasons we can't really catch Borisov or Oumuamua anymore is actually because we caught them way too late and so trying to catch them now is practically impossible. But if we can catch an interstellar comet before it arrives into the inner solar system and have a spacecraft ready to intercept it, it might allow the scientists to finally visit one of these objects and study it in detail. And so that's kind of the mission for the Comet Interceptor. 
but that's not really going to be launching for another 8 years or so. And statistically speaking, we're probably going to be discovering at least a dozen more of these objects by the time this interceptor is ready to go. But anyway, until we discover something else about these unusual objects, or until we discover another one of these interstellar comets, that's all I wanted to mention. Really cool discovery, really awesome analysis, and definitely something to think about. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.